today on Rewind, we're going to be interviewing Hal Schmidt of Velatus Wine Winery. Velatus Wine. God damn it. Welcome back to Rewind with me, Schwitty, because are we seriously not doing phrasing anymore, guys? Today on Rewind, we're going to be interviewing Hal Schmidt of Velatu Swine. And uh, Hal, um, how did you get your start in the wine industry? Yeah, that's a great question. I started My start in the wine industry was actually in this room, right over that tasting room bar. Uh, I was a pilot in Lemoore, which is about an hour and a half east of here. And... We'd come over here for stress relief and wine tasting. And back in 98, almost 20 years ago, or maybe 20 years ago, uh, met Rich behind the tasting room bar. And interesting, that same day, had one of those uh, Revelation wines. It was a 95 Cabernet Franc. I did not know that wine could taste like that. And it was pretty cool that uh, uh, Rich was back there pouring it. Uh, being somewhat obsessive compulsive, I asked him if I could, could help him sometime. And uh, he took my name number and then called me about two months later saying that they, if I was serious, they really needed help. And so I came over and worked my first harvest in 98 and have been here ever since. Nice. A little background on how a uh, former naval pilot, uh, Top Gun, both pilot and instructor. Uh, yes. I heard you might have rewritten the book on uh, <laughs> tactical dogfighting or something of that nature. Yeah, a naval aviator for 15 years. Uh, taught at Top Gun for two tours, so five, five years at Top Gun as an instructor. And in the second tour, we did rewrite all of the air-to-air tactics for the Navy, Marine Corps, and ultimately adopted in one form by the Air Force. So That's pretty cool. And it, was, uh, it was good. And then that relates to your Velatus label because you've... Um, well, the, your shirt even has... It is. The, yeah, Velatus label. Velatus is Latin for flight or flying. And we wanted something when we created the wine just to be aviation, uh, but not too in your face. Uh, since then, we have rebranded and put aviation in your face. So airplanes and uh, patches and things like that that are all reminiscent of naval aviation. And uh, tell us how you got from helping out here at Midnight Cellars to starting your own label. Well, I guess I'd been here... Started in 98. I missed the 99 harvest because I was on deployment. I uh, missed the 2003 harvest on deployment. But other than that, I, you know, winemaking is, um, it can, you can be as technical as you want, but ultimately grapes want to be wine. Mm -hmm. And I found that, you know, this is actually relatively easy to make wine. And so in 04, I uh, bought the first two batches of grapes, a little bit of Malbec, a little bit of Syrah, and started the Velatu side label there. It seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, if anybody's considering that, I would suggest that you don't because wine is remarkably simple to make and it's very challenging to sell, uh, but it is uh, it, it was a great start for me and we've kept with it now for 13 years at Velatus, grown from just that simple 50 case lot now doing about 750 cases a year. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, if they wanted to find Velatus, uh, can you ship... Uh what, internationally? Uh, no, I, I can't ship internationally, but uh, I, I can do, go 38 states. Uh, it's velatuswine.com. You can also get there, velatus.wine, topgun.wine. Uh, multiple ways to get there. If you just Google me, Hal Schmidt, Top Gun, Velatus is the first thing that pops up. So Velatus, um, what kind of varietals do you make? You know, we did, it was mostly red. We started out with Syrah Malbec because I thought it was an interesting combination. Uh, it worked really well. And then, unfortunately, my Malbec vineyard sold to somebody who was not the uh, most friendly and not the best uh, grower, let's say. And so we had to shift it up a little bit. Uh, so these days we try and do, we still do Syrah, uh, but Syrah Grenache blend. Uh, we do a Bordeaux style blend, Petit Verdot dominant. Um, got some great Tanat in barrel. Uh, I do have a Pinot Noir that uh, you're very familiar with, uh, very close to the, uh, the Rewind Pinot. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we made that. Bottle. Yeah, we made that together uh, two years ago, and then I also lead a lot of photography tours, and I go to Alaska all the time. And up there, all you eat is seafood, so I got a little tired of red, trying to do red wine with seafood. So I decided to make a white, and now we make a white Rhone, uh, currently called Cavu, for Ceiling and Vis Visibility Unlimited, uh, Viognier, Grenache Blanc, and a little bit of Roussan every now and again. In fact, we're pressing that Viognier for this year's Cavu right now. Yeah, I also should mention that I pulled Hal straight out of Harvest right now. Um, for some reason, I'm not working today, but, uh, you know, I, that's why I'm able to 
Yeah, so so <laughs> if, we're, if we're 4K and you're looking at the uh, stains and splotches, that that's grape, uh, all sorts of parts and. Uh, See water, sweat, all sorts of good stuff. Oh yeah, and it's also like <laughs> 110 degrees outside, so uh, I'm sure there's. It's nice to be inside in the AC for a little bit. Yes, it is. Um, well, uh, a few other things I was going to ask. Do you have a favorite varietal? If I had that, I, I, that's a great question. Um, I like. I think Syrah would be my favorite uh, because it can be so many different things. That cooler climate. Uh, just a little bit more peppery, especially white peppery. You get northern Rhone, you get the smoked meat, and then you go southern Rhone, warm climate, and it's it's beautifully fruity and fun. So I do like Syrah, although it's remarkably hard to sell Syrah outside of California. True. <laughs> uh, favorite wine region? You know, outside of Paso, everybody I think has it kind of their home palate. And I do like Paso Robles just because I think we make very approachable wines. They're fun. Uh, they're friendly to most food and, or, or just for the hell of it. Um, if I had to step outside of Paso, I would go with, uh, with Burgundy. I've always been a uh, white and red Burgundy fan. And I don't think there's anybody that does Chardonnay like, uh, like Burgundy does. And if you need a lean, racy uh, Pinot, you know, uh, the Cote de Nuit is the place to do it. Oh, yeah. Uh and we'll be focusing on Burgundy in the future on the <laughs> Monday episode of Rewind. And uh, finally, last uh, softball, or last question I have prepped, uh, is uh, do you have like a favorite, well, you talked about the, the wine that like made you realize that, holy shit, wine's fucking amazing. Uh, my words, not his. Um, but same, but, same, but same uh, Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you have a favorite wine, or is, it, is that the one that stands out the most in your world? You know, I, I do have a favorite wine. I, I wish I could have that 95 Cabernet Franc all the time, but we still have a few bottles. We just tried one recently. It was pretty good. I've got one at home, and it's just going to be there for, uh, I guess, decoration from this point. But if I had to say my, my favorite wine uh, outside of that one, 95 Cab Franc, it would be uh, from McLaren Vale, which is down uh, near Adelaide, Australia. Uh, it's McLaren Vale. It is a basket press Shiraz Chateau Reynella. Just about any year, it is incredible. I'll have to try to grab yeah, one they, of those. They are or? hard to find, but it is. I, actually, last time I found a whole bunch of them, I was, I was in Hawaii and just went to this little dinky wine store mm -hmm. on the backside of Oahu. And it turns out I walked the corner and they've got an entire shelf of Chateau Renal and I bought the whole thing. Dang. Yeah. That's, that's uh, serendipitous. <laughs> um, how much does that co uh, cost to ship back? Uh, well, fortunately, I, I was able to fly it back with me, but oh, nice. uh, it, it was pricey, but well worth it. Cool. And, uh, well, is there any anything else that you wanted to talk about uh, that I didn't cover? I, we went through your wine history, uh, your what made you go into wine, mm -hmm. talked a little bit about your past, um, favorite your favorites in wine. Uh, uh, anything we should look out for from Volatus right now? Like favorite or not favorite, but your go-to Volatus. Uh, you know, bottle? Uh, my go-to Volatus bottle right now is a, is a Fox Three, which is Grenache Syrah. Fox Three is an aviation term. It's a, it's all about an air-to-air -air missile. So as a Navy fighter guy, you can launch this missile. You say Fox Three on the radio, and usually good things happen for you, bad things happen for others. But it is right now my the favorite wine, the kind of a go-to uh, Volatus wine. Uh, very excited though with the the 2016s. Uh, 14's current release, uh, 15's will be out soon, but the 16's are, are just amazing. And with that, 15, 16 will probably also release a new wine for us, which will be the uh, uh, Straight Up Tanat, which I'm excited by. And we're going to also branch out as well from kind of the full aviation theme and do what's going to be called the, the Bloody Well Right Tanat. Nice. Uh, because my, my wife's father was a drummer for Super Tramp, kind of a big band, That's and we want to we want to tie in a little bit of that musical side to it. So That's really cool. Uh, the Bloody Well Right to Not has us. Uh, we're pretty excited by that label design and what the wine's going to be. That's awesome. Well, uh, Hal Schmidt here, everyone. Uh, you can find Volatus Wines at uh, VolatusWine.com or Volatus.Wine, Topgun.Wine. 
probably should have wrote some of those down. Uh, but <laughs> we'll, we'll show up on the film on your screen. Yeah. Um, Hal, thank you for coming on. I have some swag for you later. We're going to uh, stick around. Well, you guys don't stick around, but uh, look out for uh, another Friday coming up. We're going to do, be doing a uh, fun wine challenge uh, with Hal and uh, Rich Hartenberger. Yeah, thanks for coming to Rewind. This is B. Schwitty, Hal Schmidt, saying um, I don't have a sign-off still. Yeah, you need to come up with one of those. I really do. Yeah. <laughs>